guys welcome back to the channel today we are gonna see unit 7 that is high risk pregnancy assessment and management what are the risk things related to the pregnancies how we are gonna assess them how is how we are gonna find them and how we can manage them from this chapter you will get seven marks totally that is one question for five marks one question for two marks so totally seven marks if you read this chapter, you are perfect with 7 marks. I would like to inform the first topic is screening and assessment, which I have been already finished in the previous chapter. That is non-invasive and invasive test. If you want this in detail, you can go and watch my unit third part M N O in detail if you need. I will give you just a short description, very short description now. If you want really a deep one, you can go and watch there. Now first, NST. That is non-stress test. This examination is performed to see the fetus heart rate. And uh, by the name itself, you get to know non-stress. In the sense, we will never give any impulse or any pressure from outside. We will wait till the baby reacts and see how the heartbeat of the baby is present in the inside the womb. Next is CST. This is contraction stress test. In this, we will provide contraction. We will provide impulse on the mother's womb. And we will see how the baby is reacting, how the baby's heart rate is increasing. And next is USG, ultrasound soundgraphy or ultrasonography. In this, we will see any defect is present in the baby whether the baby is growing well or not is there any problem is baby suffocated is baby is any um, different position not in the uh, proper position if there is any mal positions we will come to know here this three examination is very important apart from this i'll give you test names which will be useful in the examination purpose okay fetal biophysical profile modified biophysical profile fetal movement count umbilical blood sampling at the time of pregnancy there is one condition which is seen very frequently in the pregnant woman that is hyper MSS gravidarum hyper means more MSS means vomiting gravidarum means during pregnancy so during the pregnancy the vomiting sensation is seen but there are many women who undergoes excessive vomiting because of this excessive vomiting there will be weight loss which is clearly visible and because of this there will be water imbalance that is electrolyte discharge imbalance and even ketourea the cause for this is hormonal change and psychogenic change hormonal change is because at the time of pregnancy, estrogen and progesterone level, estrogen and progesterone level will be increasing vigorously. Because of this hormones, vomiting sensation is seen. And if you see the psychogenic is nothing but because of the anxiety in the patient, the vomiting sensation is seen. And apart from this, there are few minor reasons also because of allergic re reactions and because of some kind of food items the patient feels vomiting sign and symptoms of hyper MSS gravidarum definitely vomiting but apart from this we have dehydration the eyes gets inside that is sunken eyes tongue becomes dry dry tongue hypotension because of excessive discharge of electrolytes the BP gets low and if this condition lasts it may lead to jaundice also how this is investigated by the regular routine checkup do remember at the time of investigation first we will take the patient's previous history physical examination this will be performed apart from this you need to even note down that also apart from this we will do blood examination urine analysis liver dysfunctioning test Circulatory changes, that is vital signs, if we check, we will get to know those changes. Mainly ECG and USG is performed. Management of hyper-MSS gravidum. These are the three principles and 
this three principles are not only for this condition you can use this principle for any conditions for example you are here to control the vomit okay that is hyper MSS gravidum we will control it in two ways one with the use of medicine and one with the use of diet and all that is non pharmacological method one is pharmacological method apart from controlling the main thing we will even see the symptoms to control like because of vomiting we have dehydration electrolytic imbalance we will even try to control those things also after controlling this we will try to reduce the danger complications in leading further there may be many danger complications so we need to control it as soon as possible this is what we will do in management of any kind of disease first we will control the actual disease Next, we will control the side effects or symptoms which is related by the disease and we will try to reduce the danger complications related to the disease. Pharmacological methods. Generally, we use ondasterone to stop the vomiting sensation. Apart from this, we have other two tools. Those are phenothiazine and metaclopramide. This both also helps to stop the vomit immediately. If the diet pattern doesn't work, we furtherly provide those medicines with vomiting you can commonly see dehydration they both are very best friends starting with iv fluids and multivitamin tablets even if in this condition the patient is not regaining the patient is very dehydrated then we will provide diamond hydrinate this is of 50 ng and we will provide this dosage based on the doctor's prescription That's nursing care now the main thing is you have to advise the patient to make sure to take care of his oral health because of excessive vomiting there is a chance that teeth might get decayed and uh, yeah this is very important your thing you need to maintain an hyper MSS chart like at what time the patient is vomiting is there any particular time like after having the food the patient is vomiting within half an hour or after having the food the patient is vomiting immediately like that you need to maintain and very main thing is you have to maintain the characteristics of the vomiting that is very important to detect which type of vomiting is occurring in the patient to provide the treatment it will be very useful and regular vital signs is definitely should be maintained and intake and outtake to maintain the hydration level you should maintain it and rest everything is the common one that you need to maintain these are the nursing care that is provided to the hyperemesis gravidum Questions will be provided at the end of the chapter. Until then, stay tuned. Bye.